Amazing stories of someone who had morals. Spoke gently, lifting compassion banners. Never vacillated to say what's right. His conviction in Islam was eternally bright. Was eternally bright. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ba'd. My dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode of our show The Amazing Stories that are taken from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the narrations of the words of our beloved Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. If you remember in our previous episode we were talking about this man who wanted to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after killing 100 souls. So he went to a scholar and he asked him, do I have a solution? Would I be accepted if I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, yes, of course. He said, what should I do? He said, you should move from the city in which you live right now to a different city, to a better city. Because your city currently, the one in which you live, your land, is a big part of the problem. It is encouraging you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to commit all of these crimes so he obeyed right away and he moved to the second city. And while moving to this destination, exactly halfway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to him death and he died and he passed away. So what happened after that? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him or did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not forgive him? The Prophet والسلام, told us, فَاخْتَصَمَتْ فِيهِ مَلَائِكَةُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَمَلَائِكَةُ الْعَذَابِ The angels of mercy and the angels of punishment had an actual dispute concerning his fate after that. What should happen to him? Meaning, obviously, the malaika, the angels of mercy, wanted him to be under the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angels of punishment wanted him to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know, let's talk a little bit about the angels, al-malaika. We say malaika in Arabic and that's the plural of malak, not malik. Malik is a king and malak is an angel. Malak is an angel. And al-malaika, the angels, alayhim salam, are creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created from light. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from clay and he created the spirits, the jinn, from fire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels from light because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. He takes something, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He makes it become a living creature. Clay is nothing, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made out of clay so many billions and billions of human beings who are living and who can think and who can do so much good and so much bad also unfortunately at the same time. And as we know, the angels, they can see us but we cannot necessarily see them except in some exceptions that were narrated in some texts. But us, we cannot see them. Although there's so many angels, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how many angels are around us. We are never ever alone in this life, my dear brothers and sisters. And what happens, as we were told in other texts from the Prophet ﷺ, I will just summarize the actual idea without mentioning the hadith is that when the one of us dies, the angel of death will come to him and will take his soul away. But what will happen right after that is that his soul will not remain with the angel of death, not even for one second, for one small moment. Right away, his soul will be taken from the angel of death to either the angels of punishment or the angels of mercy, depending on which which of the two situations does he deserve to be given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this shows to us, by the way, my dear brothers and sisters, that the angels have different roles. They have different functions. Every angel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him have a function. We have two angels with us that write our deeds. We have angels that take away our souls when we die. 
We have angels that protect us when we are walking outside from accidents and so on, and calamities and so on. So many angels, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how many functions they have. And isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala able to create one angel or all of the angels that they can do so many things at the same time? They can do everything at the same time? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do that. However, maybe, wallahu ta'ala a'lam, that is a reason for us. It is a lesson for us to reflect upon. How being specialized is important in this life. And unfortunately, as Muslims today, in many situations, we lack a lot of organization. We like to have one person, as we call it, the one-man show. One person that does everything, instead of being specialized, instead of having someone who is specialized in one field, and the other person is specialized in the other field, and so on, and it will build or build in the end a perfect project, or a close to perfect. But having everybody doing everything, that will never work. That will never work. Why? Because as we have said, we want to be specialized and we want to work with perfection. And at the same time, people want to trust us. Even think about the angels. Subhanallah, maybe also that's another reason. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have confidence. Meaning, imagine the believer. If the same angel was in charge of giving mercy and at the same time in charge of the punishment, the same angel, when the believer would have his soul taken away and taken away from this world and taken out, if he would be with that angel, he would always have some t- t- kind of fear after his death that maybe this angel is an angel of punishment or will punish me or I deserve punishment after what I'm seeing right now. But no, when the person will die and then after that they will see that they are in the hands of the angels of mercy, they will say Alhamdulillah and they will be very happy and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they know that before the Prophet ﷺ told them and informed them that the angels of mercy are only angels of mercy, that you are there and this is a glad tiding for you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been pleased with you and that you are going to paradise after that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a way for us to paradise. And then after that, what happened? فَقَالَتْ مَلَائِكَةُ الرَّحْمَةِ Now we are understanding a little bit what the dispute is about. The story is explaining to us what, the, what is the main reason behind this dispute. The angels of mercy said, جَاءَ تَائِبًا مُقْبِلًا بِقَلْبِهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ They said, listen, this man came with a repenting heart. His heart wanted to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his heart is coming towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not running away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, they did not look at his appearance situation. The fact that he was a criminal and so on. They looked at his heart, at his intention, at his internal and inner state. That he is a good man now. He wants to become better. Although he did not write anything in the pages of history that can prove that he is a better person now, maybe accept the fact that he asked the scholar, but he wants good. He wants to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is also, my dear brothers and sisters, an interesting part of the hadith that gives us as a reflection, as a jam, that it is allowed for someone to use these kind of words these kind of words like saying Aqbala Ja'a Ta'iban Muqbilan Biqalbihi Allah that he came with a heart that is coming towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart is coming towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We find it a lot in the books of Raqa'iq of spirituality like Imam Ibn al Qayyim, Ibn al Jawzi, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, and so on. When they talk about the heart, they say the heart traveling to the hereafter and so on. So this is something that is correct. We can say that and there is no think that is wrong with that or against that. And then after that, the angels of punishment responded to them. They said, we have a proof as well. وَقَالَتْ مَلَائِكَةُ الْعَذَابِ إِنَّهُ لَمْ يَعْمَلْ خَيْرًا قَطُّ They said, listen, but this man never made any good actions. How can he not be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He deserves the punishment. So here what's happening, my dear brothers and sisters, is that these angels of punishment, they are looking at his outside situation. 
without looking at the state of the heart and without looking at his intention. And it shows us also, let's take a beautiful deduction from that to correct a misconception that many Muslims have, which is that the rule and by default, no one will be saved except with good actions. Meaning that only the iman, the faith, the belief that is in the heart is no relevant and is not going to help the person that much in the hereafter if a person does not do good deeds, if the person does not pray, the person does not fast, the person does not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not read the Quran, does not learn about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on. This person cannot pretend to be a good believer and to have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because look at the angels here. They are saying, no matter what you are saying about his heart, we don't care. Because he did not do any good actions. Where are the actions that will save him from the punishment? Meaning not having actions normally makes the person be under the threat of being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them. So this is very important and we found this a lot. We find it a lot in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always talking to us about الَّذِينَ amanu wa amilu salihat Those who have believed and they make good actions. Those who are believers and they make good actions. Meaning, belief comes automatically with the good actions. If you tell somebody, are you a believer in hellfire and paradise? He tells you yes. And then you say, do you believe that if you don't pray, you are going to hellfire? He says yes. So why don't you pray? Just like that, because I'm still a believer. I'm hoping in the actual forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a very weak, if not non-existent belief sometimes. Why? Because it proves that the person is not really thinking and conscious about what they believe or what they think they believe. Let's give an example. If you are walking in the street and you are crossing the street with someone and then he says, watch out, there's a big truck coming towards you. It will kill you. And then you turn, you look at the truck and you smile and, I see, and, you, see, and you say, yes, I saw it. I believe in its existence. But you're still there. You don't run away. You don't move. Is that a true belief? Is that a true belief from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart? No. He means that my heart is not really believing either the person is drunk or not conscious or anything like that because no human being is, is going to see a huge truck coming towards him, going to kill him and he's just going to stay there and smile and look at it. That's not someone who is really believing in what's happening. Let's take a few more lessons from this part and this uh, beautiful section of the hadith. But that will be right after our break, inshallah. So stay with us and we'll meet you again in a few moments. Wassalamu alaikum. This conviction in Islam was eternally bright, was eternally bright. Hopefully we'll discuss some, some tips on, on how to increase the, the ability of getting the du'a or the supplication answered. Allah delays giving you what you want and gives you a reward that is equal to that or better in this life or in the world to come uh, for giving you your sins and giving you good deeds. I'm going to look at some questions that we've asked some of our brothers on the street. Uh, we asked them, should Muslims have a dialogue with other religions? We're going to need some stability. So. We, uh, it doesn't matter where we live, we need to care for those ones to give them the rights that Allah gives. This life is not the eternal life, it is a test. Particularly for the youth of today. So if there are any parents or uncles or whoever is watching, if you have 16, 17, 18, 20 year olds with you, make sure they stop doing whatever they're doing and come in and watch this show, inshallah. <laughs> This conviction in Islam was eternally bright, was eternally bright. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome back. So my dear brothers and sisters, the angels of mercy wanted to take the soul of this man because they said he wanted to repent. They looked at his internal situation. And the angels of punishment 
wanted to take him as well because they said that his actions do not prove anything that's encouraging and that's good and that's positive for him. Here what's happening, let's explain it in a more clear way for us as humans and as Muslims. What is happening for these angels is that they think or they see that there is a kind of a contradiction from the apparent meaning of two different texts. Because the angels, just like us human beings, they receive orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders them to do some things. So these are like texts for them. And the angels of mercy, they have a text from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a revelation that says, whoever is a good person with a good heart should enter paradise and should be taken with you. And the angels of punishment also, they have their text from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this ruling that says anyone who did not do good actions, anyone who was a criminal and so on, needs to go to hellfire. So both of the two groups are actually referring to an order that they received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it does not mean that there is a real contradiction in reality. Because there is never contradiction in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that happens to us also sometimes. You will find that there is a difference of opinion between the scholars because these scholars are referring to one text that is general and the other scholars are referring to another text that is general and it gives two different rulings. So they want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean that they are making up the information or making up the dispute. They only want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it seems that the apparent meaning of two different texts is actually in contradiction while it is not true. Because there is never contradiction in the deen and the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Between Qur'an and Qur'an, or between Qur'an and prophetic tradition, the sunnah, never. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا If it was from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there would have been so much contradictions inside. But the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. However, the contradiction comes from our understanding. And here comes the tool of ishtihad, of making sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes, because some information are more, have more like uh, importance and more value. It's like a jewel that you are looking for. The more the thing is expensive, the more it is rare. And you need more efforts to find it. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make all the religion of Islam as clear to understand for everybody. It is able for everybody. It is open for everybody. It doesn't mean that there is one part of the religion that is kept for other people. No. All of the religion is open to all of the human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. However, some of it needs more effort to be understood than some other of it. For example, things like the pillars of faith, they are very easy to understand. Even for the youngest kids, you tell him you have to believe in this and this and this, easy to understand. How to pray, easy to understand. But some other aspects of the religion of Islam need to person to give time, to give dedication, to read more, to reflect. And that is because people do not have the same degree of sincerity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to have as much knowledge as their sincerity in seeking that knowledge and seeking to understand the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we reflect, when we research and everything, we will get to the situation where we actually resolved this contradiction that we thought that is there, that there is no contradiction. Sometimes one text is more specific than the other and vice versa. And it shows us also, my dear brothers and sisters, that it is okay to have differences of opinions between the scholars. It is completely natural. Some people have this phobia, they have this panic whenever they hear there is two opinions about this issue. They said, well... They would say, is there many religions of Islam or there's one religion of Islam? We said there's one religion of Islam. But again, it goes back to the issue of ishtihad, of making our effort in understanding. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the scholars and gave them the right to make ishtihad with a sincere intention, even if it leads them to the wrong information. Because some of them would have the right Opinions, some others would have the wrong opinions, but both of them will be rewarded for their effort by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it happened that even the angels who are perfect creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
compared to the human beings, they do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not have any bad desires, bad intention or anything like that, although with all of these elements, they had this misunderstanding and this difference of opinion, meaning it is completely natural to have differences amongst the human beings as well and amongst the Muslims. Of course, as long as those differences are within a rational frame and an accepted frame of difference of opinion. We want to be accept and we want to accept that a Muslim would come and he would say, I don't know if hellfire exists or not. Maybe there is a difference of opinion. Maybe I have a different understanding of Islam. No, these are the pillars and the main components of Islam that do not accept any negotiations or any ishtihad or any basically type of effort to get to a different conclusion and to a different information. Going back to our story, it shows us also how the angels are so strong in their obedience for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, none of the two groups wants to give up for now. They both want to stick to the order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them. Exactly like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them in the Quran. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون the angels never disobey the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do the actions exactly as they are asked to do them. As they are asked to do them. And this is also a lesson for us how strong and that we should always inshallah ta'ala try to be very strong in sticking to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sticking to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We don't let it down for anybody and for any other opinion. If we know that this is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the tradition of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, we follow it. We don't give it up and we don't give up on it for something else, for another opinion, for a thinker, for philosophy, for anything like that. Look here, even the angels, they are debating with other angels and they are not ready to give up their opinion and to do mujamala to be politically correct, to give up on their opinion, even if it was for other angels. So talk not about other human beings. Now what's going to happen? So this dispute has to be resolved. There has to be a solution to this conflict. فَأَتَاهُمْ مَلَكٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a room for them, made a solution for them, I mean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَتَاهُمْ مَلَكٌ فِي صُورَةِ آدَمِيٍ فَجَعَلُوهُ بَيْنَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel that came in the image of a human being, in the form of a human being, and they said, oh, let's take him as a judge between us. Let's take him, he will judge, he will judge between us. He will say whether this man is going to hellfire or going to paradise with the mercy or with the angels of punishment. So we can take from this, my dear brothers and sisters, that it is fine to take a third party, someone else than those who are involved in the dispute, someone who is neutral, to take him as a judge, to resolve our com- a conflict. As long as it is someone who is trustworthy, someone who is not going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who wants only to resolve the problem and to bring back the brotherhood. And this is why we find it a lot in the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us about the couple, those who are married, husband and wife. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if it gets really bad, the relation between them and this, the dispute between them, and that themselves, they are not ready to resolve this conflict, what should they do? فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا You should send a representative from her side and a representative from his side, meaning two judges that will meet together and they will decide about the future of this couple because this couple is not able to resolve this problem internally. And this also shows to us, my dear brothers and sisters, that there is a rule that the scholars have mentioned. They call it اجتهادُ الْإِمَامِ نَافِذٌ أو اجتهادُ الْمُجْتَهِدِ Meaning sometimes we have differences of opinion. We have differences of opinion. And that is completely correct as we have mentioned if it is within the actual frame 
of Islam and the frame of ishtihad. However, in some situations, we cannot have practically, we cannot adopt many opinions. Meaning, if you have an opinion concerning some details of prayer, and I have a different opinion, that's fine. We can pray our way as long as it is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and according to ishtihad, that is valid. However, if we have a difference of opinion about something to be established in our masjid, I believe it's haram, you believe it's halal, and we are both in the board of directors of this masjid, we cannot adopt both opinions at the same time because it is contradictive. So in this situation, what will happen? As long as it is a situation of ishtihad, the judge or for example the director of the masjid or anything like that or the shura of the masjid meaning the council that will vote for the decision anything like that will make the decision and they will choose the ishtihad that they will go with the same thing with the ruler if a khalifa when ramadan comes for example there are some details concerning some differences of, of opinion about citing the moon and the crescent for beginning ramadan but we cannot have so many muslims Adopting so, adopting so many opinions and having so many Ramadans at the same time. And this is why the Khalifa or the ruler or the Muslim leader, he will say which opinion to adopt and everybody will have to follow him after that because it is a situation of difference of opinion. And also finally, this hadith shows to us that the angels are able to take other forms and other images because this angel actually came in the image of a human being and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them this ability as it was proven by many texts. Stay with us and be with us in our next episode inshallah ta'ala we will continue with so many other beautiful lessons that we can take from this story of wisdom. Jazakumullahu khayran wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I love the Prophet who struggled so hard when his mission was just a start He held the hands of each companion On shame to play With little children With little children Amazing stories of someone who had morals Spoke gently, lifting compassion banners Never vacillated to say what's right His conviction in Islam was eternally bright Was eternally bright